Uh, well, whatever. Uh, uh, to me, yeah, it's like you're not gonna. There's no what you don't stand a chance. But you know, whatever. You can have hope. You can have hope if you want. I'm not saying I'm going to persuade you, but I'm saying you're never going to persuade me that um, there's, yeah, that, that there's any answer in this gun nutty stuff. Because like I said, the price you pay for it, the more guns you put in people's hands, the more. It's like I don't even like people driving cars. We give driver's licenses to too many people. Um, and uh, there's way too many people, you know, there's, there's just no way. Human beings are just grotesquely unreliable. And um, it's like even this case of the school shooting, right? I mean, the woman owns guns, but yeah, obviously they were accessible to her, her you know, mentally fucked up son. And what's the point? Yeah, I think she's an absolute, I think she's an absolute fucking cunt. If you can't, you can't buy a $5 fucking lock because you have a mentally insane retard in your fucking house that you probably smoked fucking, I don't know what you smoked, fucking cocaine, crack, whatever, while you were fucking giving birth to him, so now he's fucked up. And he used to beat him, and now you just leave a twenty two on the kitchen table. I, I wish somebody would have shot that piece of shit, but it is Well, somebody it is. did. I mean, he did. But, I mean, the point is, is well, I know, but the, the point is, it's, it, this is no way to run a civilization. I'll go back to it. I mean, it's just, this people's people aren't going to do it right. They're going to do it sloppy and wrong. And I'm just saying, I feel perfectly comfortable to exist without a gun, and I know that anybody who kills me, if they kill me, well, it's somebody else they didn't kill. If they didn't kill me, they were going to go after somebody else anyway. So if I had a gun and I scared him off, then he's going to go after somebody else. So there's no winning here. You're just pushing, you're just pushing, you're just pushing the crime somewhere else. So I'm just saying that argument to me is the one that's unresolvable. Why, why should I protect me? over somebody else's existence, because you're not going to beat criminals. Right. And there's also a gain, gain issue involved. I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to keep, uh, I don't want to keep talking outside of the recording, although I don't want to sound like a dick for saying that, but, um, if, we, if this does come up, we should bring it up. You know what I mean? This, yeah, it, that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely talk to you more about this, but like you said, you're falling asleep and I don't want to prolong your pain here, but I, I do have some uh, just just to know in the back of your head, I do I do have some what I feel um, pretty solid arguments, you know, at least on the agreement of the Second Amendment thing. So if if that ever comes up, hopefully we can like if there's dead space, I'm saying, and you feel like yelling at me. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. The Second Amendment's another just bogus issue. But anyway, whatever. I mean, obviously, it's a different world we live in. The day when the Constitution was written, right, women didn't have the vote and blacks weren't citizens, so oh, they weren't, yeah, human, they weren't human, human beings. So I'm not too impressed by going with, you know, 200 year ago analysis of what it meant to have a gun. And we don't oh, live, right, right. there's no bears in my, well, there are bears in the woods, but you know what I'm saying, they're not a threat to my existence. Uh, there's right. not, uh, there's no mountain lions or wolves or any of the other things people had to deal with. So it's, it's just kind of silly to talk about people's right to have guns in a world that's completely different. Oh right, and and obviously, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to blow smoke up your ass. I mean that 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 entire argument for the Second Amendment that I would have if the opportunity ever arose to give it is contingent upon you believing that the Constitution is as good of a document that we have for the law of the land at the moment. You know, so I mean, like it's it's obviously subject to. I mean, because we do need an amendment for shit like. I mean, it sounds weird, but for, like, cigarette smokers to, like, guarantee that vice, it, like, there's nothing in there about your vice. Even though the pursuit of happiness thing, as long as it doesn't impede on someone else, sort of should have taken care of it, but there's nothing specific. Well, I know, but it's been, it's been built into it through court decisions. So, I mean, you can combine the 8th, the 14th, and the 5th Amendment, and you can come up with a pretty good law that you basically can't um, discriminate. You know, even though the word discriminate isn't in the Constitution. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. I think it should have been rewritten. I think we really should have had the Constitutional Convention and done this right. But, um, you know... The, like, no, like, like, you mean, like, no amendments just make the document sort of thing? Well, I just mean rewrite the amendments so they have... Yeah, yeah. That they actually mean something. The language is stupid. I mean, obviously, there's no absolute right to free speech, right? You don't have the right to slander. So it's stupid to say you have free speech. No, you have free speech within a container. 
of reasonable speech. If it's not reasonable speech, it's not free. Okay, so you're free to be reasonable. You're not free to be unreasonable. Right. You know, I mean, free speech doesn't mean I can use a megaphone, right? You know what I mean? Doesn't mean I could use a nuclear megaphone. Is that my free speech right? No. I'm just saying it's just kind of useless language. Most of the amendments are useless language because it's so inarticulate. Yeah, they either don't guarantee anything or it's, you know, it's, it's, too, it's too easy to impede on some sort of right given enough, like the, like the whole cigarette tax thing. If, if enough people just don't like you, they'll just tax the fuck out of you because fuck you sort of thing. Yeah, well, like I said, that's been taken care of in court decisions in principle. But yeah, there's no absolute statement protecting liberty interest, even though there's this liberty interest written into the document. Right. I mean, we have this right to liberty, and it's the people attempting to take a liberty away who are the ones that have to make an excuse why they're taking it away. And that's the basic nature of law. And unfortunately you know, because of this inarticulate document, it's almost impossible to tell which, you know, where the priority is. Plus, there's a lot of 18th century vernacular, which is another huge, huge difference. A lot of, a, literally a lot of words, like I went through the entire Constitution thinking about uh, arguments that I was making with people about the Second Amendment and all the other amendments. There's 18th century language obviously riddled in the entire thing that mean completely like if you had an 18th century dictionary given in the context of how they all written there's so many things in there that mean a completely different thing than they do right now and they're construed to different mannerisms now or i mean not different well i understand but the second amendment's kind of a poor example i think the establishment clause is more i mean that's kind of funny no law respecting the establishment of a religion of, re right. of religion, it says. So an establishment right. of religion. Now, what does that exactly mean? Does it mean a building where religion is conducted? An establishment? Or does it mean the establishment of a religion? Or does it mean a group of religious individuals? You know, I mean, it's just such vacant language. But the Second Amendment, to me, is the, that, that to me is the most obvious conditional right ever written. I mean, the whole preamble. No, none of the other amendments have a preamble, right? So it's right, only, that, only, that it's, only the, it's only the second word. amendment that the, it's, it's obviously a conditional right based on this idea that, well, we basically are cooked. We don't have a standing army, so how the fuck can we restrict gun ownership? It would be insane, you know. True, which is, which, which is the other reason, you know, which is the other reason why those two... Conditional. I mean, like, essentially that entire amendment has two words in it which are extremely conditional that you have to get around, me, me included, right? And that's, the two of them are regulated and militia. Well, I'm just like saying the very fact that that's in there is right. just saying, if they want an absolute right to gun ownership, they just say, you have an absolute right to own a gun. You know what I mean? They would just say it. They wouldn't need to be conditional. So the whole fact that they were conditional means that it must be in a conditional right because they put a condition in. Right, and, <laughs> so, and, and the condition <laughs> is the thing that you got to argue, which is what a lot of people... Well, I'm understand. just saying, but the, the truth is is that they, you don't have to argue the specific condition. All you have to argue is the fact that they already conceded it was a conditional right. And whether or not we need militias anymore or whether or not that all these other circumstances exist, doesn't, all it means is that we can replace that condition with another condition. But the, the right. concession was is that the right isn't absolute. It's not something like God-given, okay? It's not an absolute right to own guns. No, it's a conditional right. Right. And like you said, you can only really argue based on what the condition is. Right. Well, I'm just saying, I don't think they were saying there's only one condition. They were giving you a condition they were looking at the right in the face at that time. So they gave yeah, you they, the, they gave you one absolute condition. Like, right now, we don't have a standing army, basically, so, yeah, uh, everybody can have a gun. All right? But in a hundred years, maybe there'll be some other condition. I'm just saying, the fact that they established the fact that there is a condition just means there's not an absolute right, there's a conditional right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and what, what was the what was what was the other what was the other one that you brought up? Because that's a really good one too to keep in to keep in the old mindset. The one about uh, establishment of religion. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's just the, 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 the First Amendment with the, you know, just the idea that you're not supposed to be, a, it says respecting an establishment of religion. It's just a very, it's a very weird sentence, because you don't know, what does respecting mean? Does it mean respecting like, um, I think you're a great guy and, you know, I'm going to give you respect because you deserve it, or does respect mean dealing with? You know what I mean? There's two, two, the two, two ways to interpret the word respect. It means, you know, in reference to our admiration. You know, so the word has two meanings, admiration or reference. And so, which one did they mean? Right, and that's and that's another another stipulation in a completely different amendment that they should have just written. You have the the right <laughs> the right to make an argument, regardless of if somebody's feelings are hurt, except for if you're yelling fire in a theater or you're destroying someone's reputation. And religion should have absolutely nothing to do. With it, <laughs> you know, well, you there should have there should have been those pre-statements that it is the desire of the people, for the people of the United States to live in secular harmony or some kind. You know, they should have put some statement just dealing with the fact that you're perfectly free to be religious as long as you're not going to impose your religion on other people who don't want it. And the, like I think it's I think it's I think the problem is is so many of those people were writers that they kind of built in this sort of poetry into the language that's really, really shitty 200 years, 400 years later. Well, I don't know. I, I, th I think at their time, though, I think those words did mean something. So I think by their definition, it did mean something. But yeah, right. I mean, obviously, the, you know, the Magna Carta was written in, what, 1328 or something. And, you know, yeah. they're, they're still taking that old common law. I mean, common law was, you know, could be a little bit convoluted. I look, it couldn't even properly define what a person was, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it was pretty big fail when you were you're talking about writing, you know, documents about the dignity of human beings when you still own slaves. I mean, what sense does that make? Yeah, one, one, one third a human. Like, they, they specifically dis described how much their humanity was worth. Like, that's, that's still getting pretty fucking specific, which the document could have used more of, I guess even though that's in the wrong direction, but still. Yeah, I mean, it was and, good. It was a good as a first draft, but, you know, they definitely should have fixed this. I mean, you know, the, like I said, the courts did a lot of fixing, but it, it needs to be literally fixed. It needs to be literally made clear what the idea is, is that basically you all have liberty interests, and we do not take away your liberty without cause. Right. But then again, if you leave it open to being one of those quote-unquote living documents you have you open so many fucking doors for abuses well that's what i just said though that's that's the whole point that's why i'm saying it sort of needs to be written in better cement so we don't yeah. need judicial interpretation to make it rational right. i mean the only thing yeah, making no, the only thing no making the constitutional proof. rational is in judicial interpretation without inter judicial interpretation the constitution doesn't mean anything and we, but we don't have any pillars of truth at the moment that would be entrusted with any of that. Unfortunately, we have no, we have no. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't think there's anybody out there, especially with your experience with the law, that you would ever vote in to write that document. You know what I mean? I don't think, I don't think that, I don't think anybody can be trusted with that at this point. So you sort of have to. I mean, I guess editing the current one is really the only way to go, unless we can. Well, well, the point is, is you write them and then you propose them and then you vote on them. So the only one, you know, it's right. like basically a constitutional amendment. You're just basically going to pass a new amendment that rewrites the Constitution, and you have to just get 60% of the people to say, yeah, that's a good document. Yeah, well, guess what? Guess what will happen to the to the document? Uh, we don't have to pay rent ever. Um, candy bars are free. <laughs> we're well, we're going to have a lot of Californian fucking uh, law. In the, in the Constitution. Well, I'm just saying, that won't get anywhere, though, so I don't I don't get your argument exactly. I'm just saying that both political parties should write their constitutions. They should write rewrites of the Constitution. Oh, okay. no, I, get it. I get it better now. I, I, and, I and then at some point, we should decide what we like about both of these documents and maybe make a document out of both of them and actually ratify it. I mean... Sort of like the whole business thing, like, as so long as both parties are slightly dissatisfied, then it's 
the best deals. Sort yeah, of like you know, they could get you know, maybe we could make trade offs. You know, I, I might trade yeah. off for for an absolute right to liberty in these other areas. I might trade off on an absolute right to gun ownership or something like that. You know what I mean? I might. I might trade a couple of really good amendments, and I might give away a shitty yep. one to get my three good ones. You know what? That's a, that's if uh, do you have any way of writing that down? Because that, that I don't think I don't know if you have made it that argument in that way before, but that sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, well, I you know I should do as I preach. You know, I should write my own constitution <laughs> and you know just put it out there as a proposed document. Right, and other people can write. Similar, you know what I'm saying? Like so, like, and you can you can have a dialogue with somebody who is on the complete opposite side of the fence as you, and you can sort of like mock a public trade-off session of a constant. You know? What yeah. I well, mean? Th this is like the a, joke, right? This is sort of the irony of things. Is you know we had this terrible war with Hitler and the Germans and all this stuff, but the German Constitution is like a great bastardization. You know what I mean? Like we took the old documents and took the good pieces out of them. And they took, like, the best of our Constitution and did improve on it, you know what I mean? Made a more explicit human rights document. And, right. and that's the irony, is that, you know, it took the war to do that, but, I mean, they, have, they ended up with a better Constitution than we have because they got to write theirs much later than we wrote ours. Absolutely. And so it's that, that whole, that's, whole that's idea. That's an extremely that, good subject. We, we have to... We have to write that down, and it has to be brought up at some point because, like, I, I think I think it would be very useful to have different people um, having to, I mean, especially certain people having to write down their constitution and having to pit it up against somebody else's constitution. Yeah, but because it's not all that big a document. Least, you know, that's sort of the joke here. You know, the constitution is not that huge a document. You know, and, and, and this idea of writing up law in a simple way, having a couple of really good paragraphs outlining what law basically, what standards it should, it should meet, this really shouldn't be that tough. And, and like I said, some of the old courts have done some of the work for us. They come up with these good strict scrutiny tests, you know, different tests to judge whether, you know, a liberty interest and it's, you know, whether the, 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 the state has a, 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 a right to impinge and all that, you know, some of that stuff's really good stuff and should be, like, written right into the Constitution. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Um, fuck, are we recording at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I started recording 20 minutes ago. Okay, sorry. I didn't want to fuck the recording up. I, I apologize. No, uh, so what, what, I, what I was proposed, uh, what I was going to ask you is what about, um, what if something doesn't, I, I, I don't mean to sound insulting in any way, shape, or form, you know me, but... Um, what if something doesn't go your way in in the consensus bureau? Like, what would be what would be the recourse written in? Like, I realize that you obviously don't agree with the personal right to bear arms, right? But you know, a recent Supreme Court decision dictated it as such, right? So what what um, what written in? You, you, do, do you know what I'm, Do you know what I'm getting at? Well, uh, part of my argument might tie that any rights, any liberties to the social costs and the fact that maybe gun owners then have to either control ownership. So you have to have, you have to come up with some kind of mechanism that makes it possible to license. You can't just like I said, how can you have an absolute right to drive? Right? You can't have an absolute right. It has to be a tested right. It's it's well, too it's too absolutely. it's too powerful a liberty to have an absolute right to. You know what? I literally made a fucking video today about that. I made a literal video today. Like I would make the concession because I am not unreasonable about my second uh, about my perceived Second Amendment right. Right. So I wouldn't be opposed to say uh, one weekend a year having to take a gun safety and training course on how to use your particular firearm and how to keep it safe and how to keep it locked mandatorily. And initially, I was saying that you should have it federally funded, but that's sort of a waste of money. I think that you should have to go to an established place like certain gun clubs have to be licensed in this and you have to pay your fifty dollars for your one weekend thing and you get your little driver's license slash whatever stamped with yes I am completely certified in the operation of my firearm and the safekeeping of it and I paid my money and the money goes in a big pool or whatever to uh, you know help gun victims or whatever and you're trained and less by you know what I'm saying? Like right, yeah, I know, but then, then we're basically back to the, the old dilemma of you're going to have legal access for 
one class of people and illegal access for another class of people. Because obviously, if you get if 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 you make gun owners pay the real freight for the for the liberty, it's going to be too expensive for a poor man to own a gun. So, you know that that becomes you, you know it's it's very dangerous to have a liberty interest that um, you know ends, mm -hmm. up, ends up being discriminatory. Though. So that's kind of the case though now. Unfortunately, because well, unfortunately for me, not fortunately for you, because the case is now a poor man can't own a gun. There is no gun that's that's I would argue in any way, shape, or form usable less than three hundred dollars. And three hundred dollars for a one-time purchase, plus all the taxes and, and everything out the fucking door for a one-time thing is pretty fucking big. You know what I mean? Well, I don't it's think we I don't think we need to have cheaper guns than that. That's not even my argument. My argument it's is if we well, add if we added the real if we added the real cost of the gun, it might be fifteen hundred dollars. So that's all I'm saying. If we add the cost of controlling the the access to the guns, okay, all the bureaucracy that's going to be needed to keep the nut cases. You know what happens if you get a brain tumor and you go wacky? How do we get the guns out of your hand? Right. Well, at the at the very least, at the very least, the concessions that I was willing to make at least goes in a in, in a correct correct direction. If this is supposed to be a personal right, you should at least. I just have think it's no better than any other liberty interest, in my opinion. Okay, it doesn't have any special status. All right, gun ownership, in my opinion, is no better than pit bull ownership, or you know having a a. a, a really smelly farts, okay? I mean, this it's just another mechanism. It's another liberty interest. So I don't, I don't see why it should have any special status. It should just be protected as any other liberty interested. And as long as your liberty stays confined to harming you, it's okay. But as soon as it goes on the street, well, then we have to talk about it. I mean, quite obviously, we're accepting alcohol as a liberty interest, and it's causing right. horrific social damage. All right, yeah, so we have pretty high tolerance for the abuse of these liberty interests. But I'm just saying, in my opinion, gun ownership isn't any better than drunk driving. Oh no! Well, okay. The, the the abuse the abuse or negligence of gun ownership is no better than drunk driving. Well, I'm just, just saying like as a as a thing. I'm just saying no, I don't. No inherent abuse or negligence in either of them. It's the human element of the abuse and the negligence of the drunk driving. You just said it, drunk driving. Getting drunk in your house and watching fucking YouTube is no problem. Getting drunk and driving your fucking car is a problem. Right. Not who who pays who pays who pays for the cost is that's the problem, right? There's gonna be this social cost incurred and and somebody should be accountable for it. Right. The the criminals. Well, I'm just saying, well whether you call them criminals or not, I don't know. How do you tell a drunk from a drunk driver? What do you mean? Like, how do you tell? Well, them until they the commit the crime, you can't tell them apart, can you? I mean, until a drunk runs your kid's kid over, you don't know that's who he is. Oh well, I mean, there's well, no a way to uh, preempt the crime, is what I'm saying. So you, you know, I'm just saying, if somebody kills my kid, the bottom line is, is they killed my kid as a class, as a group. Okay, it wasn't an individual, it was these liberty writers are the ones that are responsible. I mean, it's people who consume alcohol, people who eat meat, kill and torture animals. That's the way it works. It's not an individual thing. You don't go looking for each individual human, go find the animal they killed. Right. I'm sorry, I'm the phone went off. Yeah, it's okay. But, um, yeah, sorry about that, but yeah, I, it, that, that sort of made me lose my train of thought. But I under, I understand that sort of the same concession that I was willing that I was willing to make about you know like the one weekend a year thing, um, the whole having to use. I mean, like there has to be a progression towards a betterment because there's not going to be any abolishment of either, right? So the whole. Like, you, I'm, I'm sure that you're, you're familiar Well, I'm not, I don't know if there's no abolishment. Again, I just don't know, you know. I just don't know why we don't have to have a very high standard for gun ownership. I mean, lots of countries have very high standards, not low standards. They're high standards. You have to have a real reason to have a gun. And I, that's probably a sensible, uh, um, um, in my opinion, confinement on the liberty. But I, like I said, I don't want to really argue... 
right. this subject because it's not one I want to fix with legislation. But I just, oh, no, 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 no. I no, just, no, no, I do no, think no, no. it is kind of silly to have a amendment in the Constitution for gun rights as if God declared guns some sacred part of my anatomy. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'd rather have a constitutional right saying, you know, no one is allowed to cut my penis off than to have some right to own a gun. Right. I mean, if you're going to articulate rights in this in the, in in the Constitution, I don't think I don't think guns deserve any special status. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess that's where we diverge. I mean, but. Uh, Going back to trying to, like you said, put a put a put a hamper on a well, not put a hamper on a right, but but uh, contextualize your right, right. So one of the one of the good steps to figure out how the drunk is the drunk who bought into your kid beforehand is maybe before you start your car, you you know you know those cars that are hooked up with like the breathalyzer thing. We have to blow in the fucking thing. And the car yeah, but who's going to pay for that? The the, the drunks or the car drivers? The, the driver. I mean, it would have to. Like, well, why? Why should it be my expense? I don't want to buy. I don't drink, uh, uh, and I certainly don't drink and drive. So why should I have to pay? Well, I'm just saying, why should I have to pay for mechanisms? Why? I, it's not my burden. I should. I should just ban the fucking use of the, the alcohol. It's easier for me just to say don't use alcohol than it is for me to say, why should I be burdened with the expense of of preventing you you from recklessly killing me with your stupid liberty? True. True. But, you know, all cars have brakes. Maybe perhaps if this was a natural um, way to build a car. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there has to be some sort of concession to be able to make like, it. And all, but all these technical solutions are completely defeatable. Again, they're just like when somebody says you're going to put limits on how many bullets are in the thing. You know guys will just modify them. So, right. so those limits don't mean anything. That's not going to protect anybody. And your whole idea of gun safety classes and all this shit. I went to plenty of classes about uh, herpes and, you know, social diseases. And I had lots of friends who ended up with social diseases. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not, this idea that you're going to instruct people out of being assholes is bullshit. Okay, well, maybe that's the broader subject. How do you instruct people? How do you, how, do you, how would you, I mean, like, okay. We're, we're, I am, I am obviously speaking, and, and you are speaking from a point where, you know, obviously this whole, this whole civilization thing, there has to be fixes to guard the assholes from the non-assholes, right? And there has to be, there, I mean, like, obviously you don't want to pay for the, for the blowing in the car thing for it to start, but there has to be things like that. Because just like you said... Well, you I don't see the point the in it, though. It, it, it's completely defeatable. They'll come up with some device, they just blow into it. They'll come up with some technical... It's just like a fucking um, you know, nuclear shield or something. Like you're going to stop ballistic missiles from getting to your country. It's silly. There's no Star Wars for drunk drivers. There's no defense shield you can make against them. It's a price of the liberty. And, and if we give the liberty to people who are... Who don't, without even testing them, so to speak, okay, without licensing them, um, here's that's part of the problem. Maybe part of having a driver's license is, um, you know, maybe alcoholics shouldn't be allowed to have driver's license. Maybe certain other things have to be, maybe other restrictions have to be imposed. But I, well, I'm just saying, I think you can do it through legislation, but you, you know, it's always tricky with some kind of substance that's addictive. And substances that have, um, you know, somebody can be fined for seven years and fall off a wagon. Just like a, <coughs> a gun owner can go batshit insane and we're just stuck with the mayhem they create. Right. Well, that, that's sort of the direction I was going in. I wasn't looking for a specifically technical solution. I was looking for uh, whatever you'd like to call it, a band-aid or a roadblock or whatever that sort of is either a fail-safe or a preventative measure to obviously certain liberties aren't going anywhere, so how do you fix them to be more palatable to the... To the well, I mean, I guess you have to do it through measures, you know, you know, bits of accountability. So we have a system that is imposing accountability when it comes to drunk driving. I mean, you, you watch right. a couple of your friends get ruined, and it sort of puts the fear of God in you, you know what I mean? Just, to right. say, hell, I'm not going to fucking go near that because I see them nailed with 10000 bucks in legal fees and their job, losing their job, and they're fucking ruined because they got a D DWI. 
So, I mean, all, even though that's draconian, you know, it does teach people a lesson. And so maybe with guns, you could have similar ideas where if you allow a gun to get stolen from your house, you're responsible for every crime committed with that gun. Calm down. And there are, I mean, not, not to press the subject, but there are, but there are laws in place for that. Like, uh, if you own a, if you own a pistol, right, for, for instance, uh, a revolver or anything, um, if the per, you, you cannot allow anyone to even handle your, your pistol or firearm that doesn't have a license for it. And if they are, if you, if you're at a range, right, and I have, and I have a pistol permit, my friend does it, and I hand my friend my pistol, and he's shooting at the range, and a police officer sees that, I have a fucking felony. All my guns are taken away, and I go to jail. Well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how many cases of that ever being prosecuted ever taken place. So it sounds like a little bit of hyperbole to me. Um, no, but, it's, it's true. It, well, I'm it, sorry. It's, no, I'm just saying it sounds like bullshit, okay? You can say it's true. I'm saying I think that sounds like bullshit. And more important to me would be, back to my quite my point, is no, let's make it the, the, the clearest route. If, if somebody breaks into your house and steals your freaking gun and commits a crime with it, you're responsible for those crimes and you go to jail for those crimes. I'm not completely opposed to that. Because those things are going to scare people straight, so to speak. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. When they see somebody go into the, the big house for 20 years for a murder they didn't commit, but because they facilitated it by leaving their gun on the kitchen table, well, that might scare the crap out of them. Well, there you go. I mean, that, that's, like I said, I wasn't exa exactly looking for a technical, you know, uh, patch, but that's, that's a good patch. And then we have to make somebody responsible for, re, you know, like I said, these guys are going to have to, you're going to have to go and get relicensed. You're going to have to get psychiatrically tested, right? I mean, this is just crazy not to have any kind of, you know, what, do you get to get Alzheimer's and still have 25 guns in your house? We're going to let some guy who's going Alzheimer's eat, and we're going to have 25 guns in his house? When, you know, when, when, when does it... When do you become too useless to have a liberty, right? You can, you can apply that to enter, a, any liberty, really. You know, I, I mean, obviously, different ones have different social impact. But when do well, you... Well, they do it right now, okay? There's a, they, they don't like, you know, at certain ages, you know, if you can't pass the test, you can't pass the test. And if, you're, if, right. you, if you can't tell time, you can't have a fucking gun. Right. Exa okay. All right. I mean, yeah, a driver's license situation might 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 be useful. I mean, well, obviously is useful, but you know how would uh, how would that like we were talking about before? How would that am how how can we make that amicable? You know, what I mean, and, I, and these conversations are like I said, I I, I am a believer. Why well, I, I do know it what defeats the purpose. Okay, like I said, my father's ninety two, and he yeah. just got a three year renewal on his license. Now, what yeah. sense does that make? All right? I mean, he's 92. Okay? I mean, by 95, he might be batshit crazy, and he's still got a valid driver's license. Uh, well, I don't have a solution. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I well, I'm just I, saying, I obviously, the solution would be that, you know, as you get older, you'd have to have more tests. And as if you, and if you, got, uh, uh, if you ended up on any psychoactive drug, you know, any kind of drug for depression or any other kind of crap, well, then you'd have to be tested more often. I mean, you can't, this, like I'm just saying, you can't, th these are the, just the rational limitations you have to put on these liberties. Right. The freedom isn't free part, you know what I mean? The whole, your, the, the right to swing your fist ends in my nose sort of. Well, it's idea. just that there's rational responsibility, and I'm just saying there's no way, you have to prevent some of this, this mess. You can't just, you can't just punish people for the victims. Because that doesn't do the future victims much good. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, deter some crime, but you've got to do some prevention. You can't just sit well, back. I mean, it is important. You can't that just sit back and let anything. it happen. You, you know, because you know what the correlates are. You know what the likelihoods are and what the probabilities are. So uh, define the probabilistic. I mean, we can profile um, the, 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 the abusers. And we sort of have a responsibility to do that with a liberty that carries this most potential threat. So yeah, I mean, those every everything everything that you're proposing needs. I mean, I know that you've spoken about it before, but have you had any like <laughs> like 
the whole the whole writing your own constitution idea. I mean, have you had anybody? I, have you ever proposed that? Like, has I mean, it, it, has anybody been inclined to sort of, you know, sort of make put put their put their balls to the you know put their balls on the table and, and start making concessions back and forth? Like, is that a useful, you know, uh, little experiment? Like, would that be something that would gain anything? Do you think? Like, if people were to. You know, well, I, I don't know how much how much it, in a hypothetical order. Yeah, well, it's it's like I said, we're just talking about it now. I mean, I haven't tried that direct approach, but I mean, obviously, I've tried making persuasive arguments on simple subjects, and people right. are very hostile to anything that doesn't fit into some traditional notion. I mean, as soon as you say the democracy is broken and attempt to suggest some kind of modifications to democracy. They get hysterical. I mean, here we are still living with the stupid electoral college. Like that makes some kind of sense, you know. And it's just right. rubbish. It's just absolute rubbish. And you also have to realize that we have to have a free forum to do it. And YouTube is not a free fucking forum to do this at, because you made a video about people slandering you in comments, and you got fucking flagged off of YouTube. <laughs> you know, like that's. That's, that's well, I mean, yeah. Well, YouTube, up. YouTube isn't a, a, you know, it isn't a protected territory. So that's the whole problem. Is that we don't have, you know, this is another irony. Like the Supreme Court in decisions is basically a knowledge that the internet is the new uh, public soapbox arena. Okay, the right. soapbox is now migrated onto this technical medium, and yet they haven't declared any of it a free speech zone. You see what I'm so so what so they basically accepted the reality that our free speech space has moved onto the internet, and yet the space has no existence except in a corporate um, arena. So so if we if we don't have any automatic public space on the internet, if there's no public space on the internet, how can we have any free speech rights? We obviously don't have any free speech once we step on the property of any business, right? Our speech rights end where their property line begins. So if there is no public space on the Internet, how could we possibly maintain or retain our free speech rights if there are no sidewalks and there are no roads and there are no parks and there are no anything? How, where do we go to protest? There's well, no like, space like for us said, to do that. Well, just like you said, I mean, corporate interest is so ingrained in it, you realize that the fight for Internet freedom is at a level as such as, you know, uh, the government, well, I'm not going to say the government, but, you know, uh, combinations of uh, five major corporations and the FCC and channels of the government um, were, were at one time pushing to put up gateways uh, per se so say like we have the five main we have five main telecom companies say like Verizon uh, AT&T um, uh, Time Warner and you know just just add two other ones you know what I mean like Viacom or whatever you know what I'm saying essentially what they were going to do is they were going to split up the internet into domains right so Viacom gets this fat chunk you know Verizon gets this fat chunk right and essentially what it is is it's like corporate private spaces that each of them have to intermingle with you know what i'm saying so like if you there was no free speech like essentially it would be private corporate policy that would maintain the internet split into five chunks of a pie you know what i'm saying so that's well I, i'm that, just saying there was never it was never they never took responsibility they did start off like look the domain structure was first government owned um, and CERN owned right. the rest of it, and then they gave it all to these private companies to rent it to us, okay? So now a bunch of private companies are allowed to do this reselling of the Internet in little chunks right. and pieces. And this, the, But the basic point is, is there's no regulated space. So if you don't regulate anybody, like when television was invented, right? The government didn't own television. But it owned the right to regulate television, and it said television had to function in the public interest. Okay, it required them to put public service announcements on TV. It required them to do public service television shows. It required them to allow people to comment on the news after the news. You know what I mean? When the news went on at night, you'd actually have some guy that would pop on for two minutes and go, 
I think these people are wrong, and I got, you know, and he would do his little editorial, and that was part of one of the rights that were provided to provide this free speech mechanism. And oh, then wow. when they deregulated television and deregulated cable, especially, they just gave away it. You know, they just said, no, we no longer have any public rights on this medium, and that would have been okay with me if there still was some public space, like if there was some yeah, library uh, space, if there was a library space or a park space, a U.S. government-owned space that did provide free access, um, then yeah, then you would have something. But they, the fact that they didn't create any mechanism, so I'm just saying, we basically have a, a, a constitution where we have free speech, but it doesn't apply to any space on the Internet because there is no such thing as public space on the internet well there's two there's two huge obstacles that we, we you know we I'm saying have to overcome I mean there, there's a whole free market aspect like you have you have too many people that 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 are with the idea of you know the freer the market the freer the people sort of thing so if you let the businesses do like the libertarian idea if you let the businesses do whatever the fuck they well want, that's just uh, let's not even go there let's, let's not even go the wacky stuff right i mean that's just com obviously well, we, no, that's, well, well that's one aspect the other well i'm aspect just saying we know there's the, the freedom tied to money doesn't mean anything okay if all freedom means is you have enough money to speak well that's bullshit right so we're talking about a const we're talking about a constitutional right to be able to stand in front of a business right. and say this business is a crook. Well, that right doesn't mean anything if the only place you can protest is on some part of the internet that doesn't even exist. In the sense no, that it's not Google indexed, it's not next to the building, it's not it's not within five million light years of the building. What what good is the right to protest? If you're 500 million light years away from the thing you're protesting, right, and and that's one of the obstacles. That that's what I, I'm not saying that the free market idea is a good idea. I'm just saying that's one of the obstacles. And the other obstacle is is just as cigarette smoke, cigarette smoking is. A lot of people view the internet as sort of the luxury item. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to fucking smoke, so who gives a shit if there's a three thousand dollars? Well, I don't think anybody time. thinks that. I don't think anybody thinks the internet is meaningless or useless technology. So I don't think that's at all an I'm impediment. Not meaningless or useless, well, I'm just saying I don't think that has anything at all to do with what's missing here. I think it does. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people see it as more of a luxury item than a necessity of free speech. Well, I think that's just nonsense. I don't, I don't think you could find one single person that has that perception. Actually, I don't even think the craziest anarchists have that kind of perception. Everybody, I think all people see there's value in these mediums. That's like somebody saying television has no use or something. That would be just silly. Well, I didn't um, say it, it had no use. I'm saying it's more of a if you can afford it then you should have it, but nobody, like, a lot of people aren't going to propose everybody should have free fucking internet. Well, I'm not, well, we're not talking about free internet, though, right? I mean, that is a little bit of a separate subject, and I'm not saying that some minimum amount of um, access should be free, but in well, sort, it sort of already is. I mean, technically, libraries do provide free access, so it's not yeah, like it doesn't already exist, because it does exist. Right, but, I, but like I said, the, the whole luxury item idea, even though I absolutely do not fucking agree that it is a luxury item. Well, you'll item. have to point me to somebody who thinks that, because I've, I've never seen any opinion like that. I got, I won't be able to see it on the Internet, because nobody on the Internet would say that. <laughs> so I'm not making fun of your age, right? I'm not making fun of your age, but I can point to 15 people who are your age that would specifically agree with what I just said. As well, I mean, you're going to have to point to them. Less... You're going to have to point to them, because I'm saying they're a tiny minority, and I'll demonstrate that they got, you know, four ears and they have 13 left feet, because they're not regular humans. Okay, well, you know, they're, they're the older people that... I mean, put it, put it, put it in this mind space. They're the but the fact that, that there are older people who are disconnected from reality is not the subject, Okay. I mean, certainly there's old people who think we ought to go back to a horse and buggy. I'm just saying that what is what is a dominant impediment, and this is not the impediment. People underappreciating the value of the Internet is not the impediment. The people overvaluing the, the, the fucking value of capitalist whores is the problem. It's people's love affairs with the Apples and the Jobses and the Microsofts and the Bill Gateses and their silly 
insane notion that these assholes are, have something to do with human progress. Like they are something like Thomas Edison or something when they're not even close to the same class of human being. That is the problem. The idea that they think corporations are going to provide these services is their stupidity. Their lack of understanding that libraries would not exist if we did not make them exist. Well, that's why I put that as my first obstacle, right? The whole corporate fucking big daddy power structure on top of it. That's why I put that as the first obstacle. The second ob obstacle is obviously a lot more minor, but it exists, right? I'm not saying that, you know... That, well, I'm that's just saying, I'm point. just saying, for the sake of argument, I would like to just discon discount that as complete rubbish. So, whatever. I'm just saying, for my purposes, that's irrelevant. That is not an issue. Right. Okay. I mean, and I don't think the other... I don't even think the first issue is the issue. The issue is, is this isn't that complicated. People unanimously support libraries, even now, even though they're incredibly archaic and stupid. All right, libraries are archaic waste of money now, but they support the idea of public libraries. Now, I'm sure they would support the idea of a public search engine, a public reference that ties free speech rights to corporations, that ties things to each other relevantly, eliminates all the spam, all the advertising, all the bullshit, and does a simple keyword searches and keyword refer references, right? So things would be tied to each other in relevant and substantial ways. And I'm sure I could sell that to the American people, but nobody puts it on the table. There's never been a bill in Congress to do it, never been any conversation about it, because the capitalist whores own the two-party system. Google pays these guys not to fuck with the Internet. And Microsoft pays these guys not to fuck with the internet. So I guess I guess the larger picture, uh, to further your argument, you know, to, to keep it down that path is how do you turn the internet into today's library? You know what I mean? Like you how, don't have how to how do you... turn. It's not turning the internet. You're all you're doing is making an indexing reference. I'm just saying, if you create a public search engine, people will go there. Yeah. All right? right. There's just no doubt about it. People will use it. Absolutely, the public, the public option internet. That's, that's that, and that, and that is that is the place where we would keep our public space. That's the place where we would keep our free speech rights because we could have a, you know, at cost video service. We could have an at cost MP3 service. We could have an at cost blogging service. All this stuff would be non capitalist, um, you know, minimally functional but but serviceable um, utility uh, function. And pay and pay and uh, suggesting to pay for it through like a like you know your the, the taxes right you know what I mean like well some a, of a it would be paid system. some of it would be paid by the people using it I mean obviously if you're right. gonna if you're gonna go out and exercise your free speech rights you have to pay to go to the public park you have to pay for your own right. megaphone you have to pay for your own soapbox so yeah some of this stuff you have to take with some of the hardware your own microphone your own big screen TV. I mean, if you want some extras at your protest, well, you're going to have to pay for those extras out of your pocket, okay? But the idea is, is you'll have a platform, a place where people will know it exists, where it's not going to be dependent on Google showing you. Absolutely. And that, I mean, well, okay, so it, it, for the time being, places like Flogger Dome, right, um, are, the, are, are those bastions for the time being, you know what I mean? So... Well, they're not bastions. They're 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 just they're they're the Vlogger Dome wasn't even intended to be one of those actually. Really? I mean, I mean, well, I mean, obviously, I knew there was no financial capacity for me to provide um, YouTube-style right. bandwidth to um, all of the internets. You know, I mean, it's, no, no, you know, with 